Happy New Year Minecrafters and welcome back to another rest of video. I know I am a little bit late but the reason for that is because I had a lot of exams and assignments that I need to do before the end of semester so I couldn't really like make any Minecraft builds but now that I have finished all of that nonsense I can finally get back to Minecrafting and to celebrate 2025 in today's video I have something really awesome to show to all of you this is dots and boxes fully working in Minecraft using only redstone so there are no mods no data packs no commands everything is controlled by redstone and because of that you can actually build this in survival and because I also want to build this in survival I have try to make this as small as I can and yes yeah, you can see this thing is really dense and to make the game even more interesting I have also designed it in a way such that you can expand the play like the play area so right now I have a 3x3 grid to play the game but you can of course expand this further like 4x4 5x5 even like rectangle area such as 5x3, 5x4, 6x8 and so on and so forth because each of these cells right here can be placed next to each other before I get into the redstone let's talk about the game first since I think some of you don't really know what dots and boxes is and that's okay because I actually did not know about the game either until I did my research and it is a really really cool game and very simple game to play dots and boxes are played on a sheet of paper usually but in this case we are playing on this interface right here so the game starts off with a bunch of dots like a grid of dots and in my game Dots are represented using those black concretes right there. Now, Dots and Boxes is a two-player game. Uh, it can be played by more, but in my design, I only designed it for two players. So the two players are gonna take turns in drawing lines, and these lines can either be horizontal or vertical. And these lines need to connect uh, two dots that are next to each other. So you can draw a line like this and then it is the other player's turn. So right now it is red turn. So red can draw like this. And now it's blue turn. So blue can do this. And now it is red turn. But now red turn has something really special because when I draw this line, red player has created what is called a box meaning all of the lines are drawn so this area is now encapsulated by all of the drawn lines and because of that red scores a point and the turn doesn't change meaning it is still red turn so now red can play again and let me draw yes this line and because now in this case there is no like boxes being created the turn just switch back to blue and yeah this process just continues until all of the lines are like drawn so yeah that's basically the game and then we just count all of the boxes the player who has more boxes will win the game because this is redstone and it's not a sheet of paper it is really easy to just clear the game and yeah play a new game instead of having to use an eraser to erase all of the lines because that's the power of redstone and more specifically the power of computational redstone now that we have understood the game we can actually get into the redstone and don't worry the redstone is super simple even though it looks really dense okay the first thing that i try to figure out is the display 
So first is how do I draw the line? So when I press this button, the line stays on or the resistor lamp stay on. And it's actually really simple. Basically, when you press this button, this lamp will turn on and this observer will gonna detect that update and power this SR latch right here. And inside of this dropper, there is an item and that item will go from this dropper to this dropper as you can see and because there is an item in this dropper these comparators we're gonna detect that this comparator we're gonna power all of these resident lamps and this comparator is actually our output line so when we press the button the output of the button is here now all we have to do is mirror all of these like SR latch to all of the vertical lines and as for the horizontal lines it is the exact same circuit I just designed in a way so that it can be put horizontally but it is the exact same circuit the next thing that each cell has are these two piston right here which indicates whose box it is so if it is red box it will be like this if it is blue box it will be like this and the way we control those two pistons is by using these two lines right here the blue line and the red line the red line powers all of the pistons that have the red wool and the blue line powers all of the pistons that have the blue wool and i just snake like i just snake this redstone through all of this redstone mess to get to here and yeah it's a little bit messy but uh, it does the job and uh, it is quite compact as you can see and yeah that's basically all of the screen now now we get into the interesting part which is the logic itself the first piece of logic is the turn switching how does this thing knows when to switch turn we basically just take all of the outputs of all of these lines right here so this is one output this is one and we just take all of them and then we all them together so this is a giant or gate uh, in light gray yeah it's just a giant or gate as you can see and we gonna all them all together to get this output right here so every time you press a line this line we're gonna activate so I'm gonna press the button over there and you will see this line lights up as you can see that line lights up and this happens to all of the lines it's just I just all all of the outputs of every single line here into one singular line like this and it we're gonna go into this part right here which is the turn switching so for the turn switching here every time this composer is like this the blue line gets activated and when we give this a short pose now the uh, composer is up here so uh, the red line gets power and here we just alternate between the lines as you can see and also we take the output from this composter and we wire this to our display so now the game knows whose turn it is so right now it's red so the red line should turn on as you can see if I select a line now it is blue turn and the blue line should get activated as you can see finally is the special rule logic so if you remember when a player managed to create a box so in this case it is red the turn doesn't switch so how does the game know that now in order for the game to know when to not switch turn first the game needs to detect when a box is created and to detect this is rather easy we basically just put all the output of all of the lines into uh, an end gate so this redstone line right here this line is actually the output of the end gate and this 
end gate right here only turns off like the rest of the line here only turns off when all four lines out here aka all four outputs of all the SL latches um, are on so in this case all of the lines are on so the rest of this here gonna turn off and we're gonna detect that change over here now we what we do is we flash this reston dust with a short pulse and what this does is it will gonna let the blue line or the red line uh, signal to go through so right now it is red line so if we go to here and if I if I like try to recreate this so what it will gonna do is First, it will gonna push this piston. Uh, this piston will gonna push this redstone block over here, meaning this redstone dust will gonna flash forever. So it will turn off and on again, as you can see. And when that happens, this comparator will gonna receive the signal from this redstone torch, meaning the red line, and that comparator will gonna pass that signal to the uh, piston that is responsible for the cell as you can see and also I uh, need to do uh, like a bit of all gate here as well the gray line because we don't want that thing to like switch because that is the switch turn composter and we don't want that to happen and to do that I just all all of the uh, end gate output using the gray line here and then go down here and over here I just have a piston which we're gonna push this like light gray block out of the way to cut the signal and now because there is no signal going to here this composter will gonna stay still and after some delay we just push the block back and yeah that's basically how everything works i'm not joking that's literally the entire logic of this game it looks complicated but it is not it is super simple like that well the final thing left is the reset and the reset is actually not that difficult so over here i just have a bunch of observer and if you remember in order to depower the SR large we just need to power the dropper that has the item and I just snake as you can see I just snake the redstone signal like this reset signal through all of the SR latches to put the item from uh, the top dropper down to the bottom dropper and this happens to all of the SR latches I also reset some other stuff here like there are some more SR latches here so I'll reset that as well and yeah that's basically it oh okay down here as well down here is a also a reset line to uh, basically um, reset this part right here without interfering because when you press uh, the reset button like this part right here we're gonna give out a lot of outputs since since I'm using uh, redstone dust to power observers and observer are kind of like a monostable circuit so they were update on both the rising and the falling and when we reset we don't want to receive the falling uh, like the falling output because of that I just pull the this part up so I force this line to be cut off and yeah that's basically it there's nothing else so yeah that is the first restaurant contraption of 2025 i'm looking forward to uh, this year because i have a lot of project uh, ahead to uh, show to all of you i'm really excited about it some of them are really difficult to uh, create so if you manage to uh, stick to the end of today's video thank you thank you so much for watching and because of that I want to reward you with something you see in the background I have been working on a project 
and I have hinted it uh, here and there already but today I want to make a, a, like a small announcement to that project because I need help you see the project name is project MUC I will not gonna spoil what it is if you want to know more about that project you can go into the link in the description there is a Discord server that you can join and once you have joined our server you will know everything about project MUCE uh, now there are some uh, like criteria that you do kind of need I don't force this but it's really good if you have like all of, like all of these like skills or knowledge so I do need you to have a bit of knowledge in programming well not a bit like a lot and also in computational redstone because this project does need uh, those two things I will gonna talk more about it in the discord server so again if you are interested in the project then you can join me in that discord server other than that that's basically it for today's video thank you very much for watching like subscribe if you uh, really enjoy this again I will gonna try to uh, like yeah create more interesting stuff in 2025 I think this is a good year for my redstone journey so yeah thank you very much for watching again and I will see you all in the next video have a nice day everyone